Hi, my name is Ashley Browning. I'm a proud UConn alum from 2008, and I'm so excited to be your keynote for the career leadership experience. I've entitled my presentation, Hello from the Other Side, because I don't know about you, but I felt like life after UConn was a completely new world. A couple things about me. I have my undergrad. I got a bachelor's in English and journalism with a minor in political science from UConn, so go CLIS. Um, and then I unexpectedly went back to school for my MBA and my concentration there is in management. And I also got an HR certificate and that's from UConn, the School of Business in Hartford. So UConn through and through. I've had about three career changes. So I started off in government, moved to higher education, and I am now in the private sector doing recruiting, which I love. Um, I'm a wife, I have a toddler, a son, and a dog. Um, so I'm trying to balance all of that while working from home. Um, I love my job. I work for COCC in Southington. We're a financial technology company. Um, our customers are banks and credit unions, and we provide them pretty much anything they need from an IT perspective um, to run their institution. And um, it's great. I get to hire people for internships all through full-time jobs. Um, I help with our new hire onboarding and experience. The culture here is fantastic, but working from home is a struggle. I'm an extrovert, so I can't wait to get back into the office. A um, couple fun facts about me. I lived in North and Willie Oaks when I was at UConn. I'm not sure if they call it Willie Oaks anymore. It's off-campus apartments. And my favorite courses at UConn were Chaucer and International Politics. So a couple of things about my background. I grew up in West Haven, Connecticut, lived in Connecticut my entire life, um, and never really could identify what I wanted to do when I grew up, um, which side note, I am still growing up <laughs> way after college. Um, as you see on my reading achievement certificate photo, I love to read, I love to write, um, and I also was a classically trained flautist, so I thought about maybe going to school and studying music. Whatever I wanted to do though after high school, uh, going to UConn was not one of the things I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the city, and I applied for schools in Boston, in New York, and unfortunately, I didn't get into any of those. So off to UConn I went. Um, to say I was disappointed is an understatement. I thought I would give it one semester. I remember crying as my parents drove me up to Horse Barn Hill and to move in and just seeing all the cows in the country. Um, and I just was like, this is not the place for me if I want a career in writing or in music. I need to be in the city. Like, this isn't going to work. Um, also, side note, I now live right by campus, so apparently the country life grew on me. Um, so, went to UConn, had a big transition my freshman year, as I know a lot of us do, being on my own, having to take care of myself and prioritize studying was tough. I had a blast, um, probably too much fun at UConn, and um, I made the most of my experience. I had made great friendships, um, most of these people I'm still in contact with, um, and I decided early on to declare my major as a double major in English and Journalism with a minor in Poli Sci. So one of my professors had said, this is the only time in your life you're really going to have time to devote to reading and classics, reading, like immersing yourself in literature. So go with an English degree if you love to read and go with a journalism degree if you love to write. And I got the minor in poli sci because I love politics. So I kind of wanted to tie it all together. So the first thing was I definitely didn't pick this a group of majors for a career. Um, I had some internships that really helped me figure out what I wanted to do as well, and I highly suggest doing that. So I had a marketing internship, which was great exposure to that area, wasn't too interested in it. Um, I had some an editorial, which was awesome. So I got to do a lot of writing, learn about the magazine industry. Um, and my most standout internship was one at NBC 30, which is now NBC Connecticut. Um, and I got that internship through the journalism department. I worked at the news desk for a semester. I loved it. Got to take in tips, got to go into the editing room, um, understand how the broadcast is made. It was great. Um, I participated with RTNDA, which is a journalism club on campus. So that's me and my colleague, um, Kate Nuclo. We were at a conference in DC at the White House. Um, funny story, Kate actually is a very successful journalist. Uh, you might see her on Channel 3. Um, and you know, I graduated and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my career. Do I want to stay in journalism? And I was offered a job at NBC and was super excited about it, but they wanted me to work the night shift. And for those of you who are going into media, you know you kind of have to start at the bottom and work really hard to go up, especially in broadcast. Um, and I just didn't have the passion for it like I thought I did. So I had applied for a job at U.S. Senator Joe Lieberman's office as a staff assistant. So um, taking in constituent phone calls and helping to organize some administrative projects. And I got that job. 
And that really tied in my love for politics. And I was so excited. This was kind of the first step after graduation in my career. Um, because I had a background in journalism, when an opportunity for the press assistant position opened up in the office, I was slated in, which was great. So I went with Senator Lieberman to all of his events. I talked to the media. I helped to set up interviews. I wrote press releases. So really exciting for me to kind of tie in my love for politics and journalism, even though I wasn't going to be in broadcast. Um, that photo in the center is actually me at the Rainbow Center. The senator came here to do an event um, supporting transgender youth, and I was able to go there in my capacity as a professional and as an alum, which is really exciting. Um, the picture you'll notice over to the far left, um, he might look familiar. So that's President Biden, he was not president when I took the photo. It was He was a member of Congress, but he came to Connecticut for an event that I got to staff because the senator went. So this first position awarded me a lot of opportunity for great things um, and to have um, a growing experience. So politics is tough. Um, you really have to kind of stay on your toes. I was put in a position where I had to be super mature and professional. Um, and it was a lot of growing for me. And I think it really helped shape who I am as a professional. Um, but co politics is also really competitive, just like journalism. So I was having a tough time trying to get into um, an opportunity in D.C., and was looking for new opportunities. And I talked to someone who was on the board of directors at the Alumni Association. She mentioned a position coming up to work with volunteers. And I thought, well, that sounds really interesting. I love UConn, like, let me learn more about it. I interviewed and got that job. So I worked managing our Connecticut chapters and some advocacy programs, which tied into my work at the Senator's office. Um, and I was at the Alumni Association for a couple of years. That photo is of us at a student tour over the summer that we did in London as like a graduation um, event that students could participate in. So I got some great opportunities there. That's also me at the final four. The men won that year. Um, that was down in Houston. I just, I had a blast at the Alumni Association, got to really combine my love for talking to people and getting to know alums and relationship building, but also helping them to support students. Um, and then one of the things that I identified I loved at the Alumni Association was trying to connect alums with interns. I thought um, that work was really exciting and I loved being able to help people find like mentoring relationships and a position opened up at the UConn Center for Career Development doing that and I applied for it and I got that position. So I spent um, almost eight years at the uh, Center for Career Development working with employers to try to help them to hire UConn students for internships and full-time jobs, hosting career fairs. Um, and trying to help students just grow with the support of our employers and be able to find career opportunities. So that's me with some of my colleagues and of course our guy Jonathan um, at the Center for Career Development. So what happened kind of in between that? So I mentioned I have my undergrad in uh, English and journalism, so very focused on CLAS. Um, I spent a lot of time reading, writing, researching, um, those transferable skills that they teach you that are important in your classes. And one of my bosses had an MBA and I just loved how analytical she was and how she made decisions based on business strategy. And I thought it was great. And she really kind of inspired me to go back to school. So off I went, um, I got married in the middle of that um, and I got my MBA. And me as someone who had like this much exposure to the business school, other than hearing stories from friends while I was an undergrad, um, it was definitely daunting for me. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, but. I had to really stretch my skills. I'm terrible at math. I am not analytical. I don't know how to use Excel. <laughs> I do now because I learned, but um, it was really a challenge and I really had to push myself, but I knew having that MBA and it kind of rounding my, my career out was going to be helpful. Um, and I also had a son <laughs> uh, right after graduation too. So a lot of things were happening in my life in addition to things happening um, for me professionally and academically. So after I graduated from my MBA, I knew I wanted to kind of get into the private sector. I loved what I was doing and I loved UConn, but I really wanted to get into recruiting. So all this exposure in my job working with recruiters made me realize I want to get into human resources. So off I went um, and I left higher education for my corporate career, although we're a cooperative, so we're not technically a corporate company. Um, I started the new job in April 2020. So yep, in the middle of a pandemic, I started remote. So that is my home office with my son's toys. That's my son on my Yukon laptop um, that I had for my undergrad so he could pull up all the keys. Um, 
and I was W uh, F H W C work from home with child. So to say that onboarding was a struggle, um, is an understatement trying to balance parenting and starting a new job and learning a new role in a company. Um, so for all of you who are trying to balance multiple things and working or going to school remote, I know it's tough. Um, and hopefully <laughs> lights at the end of the tunnel and we'll be back on site in our campuses and our buildings soon. Um, so a couple life lessons for me. So again, I had an English and journalism degree because of my passions. I love the media. I love studying politics and I loved writing. So I didn't know what I was going to do with that. Um, and I had a lot of questions from people. So are you going to be an English teacher? I was like, I don't want to teach. Um, so exploration is perfect and nothing else is. Exploration is so important. So find those internships, talk to people, try to absorb as much as you can while you are in your um, UConn career, because it's really going to help you decide what you want to do after graduation. I had great internships. I had terrible internships. I had ones where I was helping to write articles for a home building company, and it was great exposure to the whole editorial process and to journalism. I had internships where I was in marketing and I was making cold calls. Um, so even if you're not successful, it's okay. It's something where you can learn and make sure to take and absorb all those experiences. Um, remember those transferable skills. So that's me with my reading achievement. I like to read. I'm a pretty strong communicator. At least I think so. You can be the judge of that after this keynote. Um, but it is really important to hone the things that are um, your strengths and especially if they're transferable. So no matter where you end up, if you're going to be working, teaching, if you're going to grad school, if you're volunteering, you're going to have to communicate with people. You're probably going to have to be writing professionally and doing business writing and sending emails. Um, you're probably going to have to research problems and troubleshoot. You Maybe you have an experience where you're a leader or you're on a team or you're coaching. Um, those kind of personality, more transferable skills are really important no matter what position you take. So remember where your strengths are and really grow on those. Um, again, mine was reading, writing, communication, and I did a lot to with communicating to other people, whether it be constituents at the senator's office or um, alumni at the Alumni Association and um, at the Center for Career Development, working with those employers and relationship building. And now in my job as a recruiter, making connections with candidates. So lean into your strengths. And then my final one is, uh, almost final one, is go out of your comfort zone. This is my corporate finance book. I am terrible at numbers, and I still am. Going back for my MBA meant taking accounting twice in my circumstance because I didn't do well the first time. It meant really pushing myself, and it made me uncomfortable. I hated taking any of my finance classes because I wasn't good at it. But that's okay. When you're out of your comfort zone, you're growing and learning. Sometimes you just have to, you know, Grab life by the horns and go with it. And unfortunately, you're not always going to succeed, um, but you're really going to learn from that. I had to really learn more about myself, what motivates me to be able to kind of get through those courses. And now I'm able to apply it to my daily life. And I look at business reports differently and accounting functions differently. And I understand some of those roles in our business. So um, again, go out of your comfort zone, do something to make you uncomfortable, stretch your skills and stretch your learning. Um, and then finally, which you've probably heard this from the center a lot of times, but your degree doesn't define you. Neither does your transcript. Neither does what you studied. Um, again, English, journalism, poli-sci. I've had a career in government. I've worked at UConn. Um, I've worked for alumni association. I've done advocacy work. And now I'm a recruiter. I'm in human resources. And there isn't even an HR degree at UConn right now. So um, it's definitely an opportunity to kind of take what you love and what you know and help that define what you're career track is going to be. Um, if you're in something like liberal arts and you want to go into something more technical, there's tons of courses you can take for free on Coursera or LinkedIn or Khan Academy, and, and you can upskill and learn for yourself. Um, but just because you're picking a major doesn't mean that that major is going to be where your career track has to go. And hopefully me sharing this is kind of proof of that too. So thank you so much for taking the time to learn more about me and to hear my story. I hope if anything, you walk away with this, knowing that this career exploration program that you're part of and this career leadership development is really going to help you kind of determine where your skills, values are, um, where your interests are and how to make a career out of that and know that no matter what, you're never stuck. There's always time to grow. There's always time to go back to school and learn, but stick with what you're passionate about and it won't feel like work.